Hi! Welcome again to Chemistry 100B. In the previous session, we have discussed about the branches of chemistry and the importance of chemistry. Today, we will trace the brief history of chemistry. The word chemistry is derived from the Greek word chemia or chemi, which means black. There are possible reasons why the use of this word chemi. One, this is due to the black soil of Nile Valley, where according to the Egyptians, chemical arts originated. Another is a certain blackening process was frequently mentioned as a preliminary to whitening or yellowing of silver or gold. Chemistry is known to date back during the prehistoric time. Due to the amount of time chemistry takes up on the timeline, the science is split into four general chronological categories. Number one, the prehistoric time to the beginning of Christian era. Number two, beginning of the Christian era to the end of the 17th century. Number three, end of the 17th century to mid 19th century. And number four, from the 19th century up to the present. Now let us trace the significant or important events that occurred in its period or era. During the prehistoric time to the beginning of Christian era, this period is known as the Black Magic Era. Now, the significant events that happened were one during the reign of King Hammurabi of Babylon there were known metals already which were recorded some of the common metals that were recorded were copper silver and gold the metal gold was the most attractive among the metals that they used in their metallurgy. Then came the time of Leucippus and Democritus of ancient Greece. These two claim that matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms and that atom is the simplest unit of matter. There was also Aristotle of Greece who declared the existence of four elements, which are fire, air, water, and earth, and that all matter is made up of these four elements, and that matter has four properties, which are hot, cold, wet, and dry. The next category is the beginning of the Christian era up to the 17th century. This era is known as the Alchemy Era. Now this dates back from 300 BC to 1520. Alchemy is known to be an old science or chemistry that deals on the transmutation of metals into gold, meaning that the cheaper metals are converted to gold. So this is their perception of alchemy. According to the alchemists, the substance used in converting the cheaper metals to gold is called philosopher's stone. Alchemists not only wanted to convert cheaper metals to gold, but they also wanted to form a chemical concoction that could cure different ailments. 
and this concoction would allow people to live a longer life. They call this concoction the elixir of life. It was also during this era that Robert Boyle disproved the four elements theory of Aristotle and also disproved the existence of alchemy through his book entitled The Skeptical Chemist. The third category is from the end of the 17th century to the mid 19th century. During this period, phlogiston theory was discovered. The phlogiston theory was proposed by Johann Becker. According to Johann Becker, that a substance is added to a combustible material when it burns. Johann Becker believed in a substance called phlogiston. When a substance is burned, phlogiston from the air is added to the flame of the burning object. For example, the calx of mercury is burned plus phlogiston will produce mercury. What is meant by calx of mercury? Calx is a substance which remains after a metal or a mineral has been thoroughly burned. It was also during this era that Joseph Priestley heated the calx of mercury, collected the colorless gas, and burned some substances using this colorless gas. Presley called this as the phlogisticated air. Then came Antoine Laurent Lavoisier. He disproved that the phlogisticated air and he otherwise called it the oxygen. He renamed the dephlogisticated air as oxygen when he realized that oxygen is needed in order to burn substances. Because of this, that Lavoisier was able to prove the presence of oxygen in air that is needed to burn substances, then he was called the father of modern chemistry. It was also during this era that John Dalton published his atomic theory. He said that all matter is composed of tiny particles called atoms and these atoms are indivisible. The next category is from the mid-19th century to the present times. One of the significant events that happened during this era is the discovery of the vacuum tube. This first vacuum tube was discovered by Henrik Geisler. Then there was also William Crookes who made a modern atomic theory using the vacuum tube made by Henrik Geisler to discover the cathode rays. Another discovery that was made during this era was the discovery of Eugene Goldstein. He discovered the positive particles by using the tube filled with hydrogen gas. This positive particle had a charge equal to the electrons. So he called these positive particles as the protons. So actually, Eugene Goldstein discovered the protons. It was also during this era that the X-ray was discovered by Wilhelm Röntgen. He was able to discover this X-ray while researching the glow produced by the cathode rays. 
Then, there was also the discovery of Henry B. Carroll when he was studying the fluorescence of the pitch blend. This pitch blend, by the way, possessed a property that gave a fluorescent light even if there is no aid from the sunlight. It was also during this era that there was the discovery of the electrons by J.J. Thompson. He discovered the electrons by placing the Crookes tube within a magnetic field. To further describe the atomic model of J.J. Thompson, it could be best described as a pudding with raisins. The raisins representing the electrons while the center part of the pudding is where the protons and the neutrons. It was during this era that Robert Millikan discovered the mass of the electron by introducing an oil droplet into the electrically charged field. The mass of the electron was found out to be 9.11 times 10 to the negative 28 grams. Then came James Chadwick who discovered the neutrons. If you try to recall, neutrons are the chargeless particles of the atom. It was also during this era that the three types of radioactivity were discovered by Ernest Rutherford. These are the alpha particles, which are positively charged, the beta particles, which are negatively charged, and the gamma rays. So that was the brief history of chemistry. If you have questions and clarifications of our lesson today, just send your questions through our Google Classroom and I am glad to answer them. Since we are done discussing the four topics of chapter one, starting from the definition of chemistry, the branches of chemistry, importance of chemistry, and the brief history of chemistry, then it is expected that we're going to have a quiz. So just look at your classwork on Google Classroom. This is Professor Nesitas Ruiz saying God bless and see you next session.